It's no secret that number five, Colorado's the go-to state for mule deer and elk. But now it's becoming more and more well-known for the huge whitetail that roam its eastern plains. Just east of Denver, just a little way, I've had the opportunity to hunt whitetail deer several times. I mean, I've taken some monster bucks there. Unlikely looking whitetail habitat like this calls for special techniques for very special deer. You know, I grew up in Wisconsin, so I'm used to traditional whitetail country. And when I first got out here, it was the same thing. You know, I went down in the river bottoms and thought that's where the whitetails have to be. And then one thing led to another, and part of it from mule deer hunting, part of it from bird hunting, and just experience, started figuring out that the bigger whitetail bucks really weren't down in the creek so much. They went out in the yuccas and uh, what we call rough pasture out here. Where these whitetail live gives them a distinctive feature that helps them catch a hunter's eye when he spots one. If you've noticed, their antlers are real white. They have really nothing to rub on, not like back in the hardwood forests or the, the pine forests of the Midwest or, or uh, East. Out here, there's nothing to rub on and the antlers stay fairly white and they stick out like a sore thumb. And these bucks will lay down behind a yucca and sure, you can't see their body and they figure they're hidden, but the antlers give them away nine times out of 10. So that when I'm glassing, I'm glassing just patches of yucca, any, any cover, grass, whatever. And I'm basically, I'm not looking for the whole deer, I'm looking for white. Forget the Wizard of Oz image of Kansas. What was once barren prairie has become an agricultural breadbasket, and with it has come a bumper crop of whitetail with almost a quarter of the top 100 typical and non-typical bucks being Kansas deer. Kansas can grow and does grow some of the very biggest whitetail deer in the world. Places don't have a whole lot of them at times and never have had a whole lot of whitetail deer in Kansas, but with the, with the advent of agriculture throughout most of those prairie states, particularly Kansas, those deer herds have grown to just unbelievable proportions. I think we're seeing more deer than we saw, uh, certainly when I was young. I can remember seeing my first deer and how excited we were driving down the highway and you saw a deer. And now in Kansas we have lots of deer and certainly on our farm we're seeing uh, many more deer than we used to. It wasn't that many years ago that Kansas deer hunting was locals only. But then non-residents were let in. And in 2008, a lottery for tags made the odds of drawing and of hunting in Kansas's long season a very attractive proposition. And one reason the state ranks number four. The thing I like about hunting Kansas is that the middle of the December, all of your other seasons have already closed and it's just the perfect time to be here. You know, it's these giant whitetails, they, they can be in a second rut all the way up to the end of December. That's why I like hunting in December in Kansas. Does not bred during the first rut cycle again the next month. Fewer in number than the does before. They are far more popular and a classic example of supply and demand. The does that haven't gotten bred during the first, uh, you know, during the first cycle will have twice as many and maybe six, eight bucks running after them uh, when, they, when they cycle in December. At number three is the Great White North of Canada, eh? Here in the provinces of Alberta and Saskatchewan lie classic whitetail woods and whitetail weather, not to mention classic whitetail bucks. Well, the terrain is really a, kind of a rough, eh? hill, hilly and all that, so, you know, naturally when they're roaming around, uh, their strength is, is, is much more than uh, the southern species and uh, they're much bigger and they're actually built a little more tougher. You know, big whitetails are like, just like rabbits. They love thick cover. They're like great big rabbits. This terrain up here in Alberta is just conducive and perfect for big trophy whitetails. It's got the thick cover, it's got water, food, got everything they need to grow monster class whitetails. The North grows deer that are so big, they're nearly an optical illusion because their bodies can make huge racks look average. Now Canada's got that tendency to grow really big antlers because we're talking about 300 pound deer. And from that 300 pound deer's head, you've got two great big pedicles from which can arise absolutely monster, very massive antlers. One of the most overused terms about whitetail is monsters monster bucks. But I think when you get to Saskatchewan, Alberta, it's a perfectly appropriate term because you're talking about 300 pound bucks with 180 inch racks. 
And this is not just a rare occurrence. This is, this is a very frequent occurrence that hunters find. I know hunters who go there every year simply because they want to kill the biggest deer of their life. So if you're looking for a place where monsters are the norm and not the exception, I believe you'd have to look at Alberta and Saskatchewan. In the number two slot is the land of Lincoln. Whatever it takes in terms of habitat, feed, climate and management to make trophy deer, Illinois has it. Illinois, what a state. I have hunted up there numerous times. Illinois has one of those states that's received so much publicity over the last several years. And there's some monster bucks that have come out of Illinois. If you look at the record books of, of trophy deer, you'll find an inordinate number coming out of Pike County, Illinois. Now, I'm not sure what the, it is, either the, the, the proximity of the river, the grain, whatever it may be. But some reason, they do grow some very big deer in Illinois. And anyone who's lucky enough to be able to draw a tag and hunt there is in for a really good experience. Bucks that would be bona fide trophies anywhere else in the country qualify as fair in Illinois. You know what's great is these bucks just show up out of nowhere. One minute you're glass in the field, you turn around and look behind you, there's something right in the middle of the field again. It's, it's just like they're Houdinis or something. They appear and disappear. And there are so many bucks right here right now. I see you see one, we saw a doe the other day. You have five bucks chasing. But I tell you, it's just been wonderful. I, I, can't, I can't ever remember when I have been in such a place that has had so many deer. I mean, it's constant action from the moment the sun goes up to the moment the sun goes down. As good as the whole state of Illinois may be for whitetail, there's a vein of gold that cements its grip on second place. The Golden Triangle of, of Brown, Adams, and Pike County is, is one of those areas. It sits in a perfect area for big whitetail deer. There are some huge deer that have been taken out. And it's, it's got a reputation of being the, the Golden Triangle. Four million whitetails, a million whitetail hunters, over a billion dollars. That's the size of deer hunting in Texas. Texas is home. There is no finer state to hunt whitetail deer in the world as far as I'm concerned. There is no question that the whitetail is king in Texas. The tradition of whitetail hunting in the state goes back to the Alamo and will continue on through the space age. For out-of-state hunters who think 130 or 140 bucks are huge, Texas requires a much different mindset. I mean, we see this deer, you have to understand, my frame of reference, I, mean, I shot a 134, and that was the biggest whitetail I'd ever seen. So it's taken me two or three days to even be able to get some kind of frame of reference to kind of judge, because they're all just big to me. The difference between 160 and 180, you know, I have a hard time with that. Uh, and when I saw this guy, I thought, I think that's one of the larger bucks I've seen on this property. So then when you get up on it and you see all those points and uh, really feel how thick they are and see the mass on them, and then uh, Art says, oh, that's probably 175, 180. I mean, that, that about set you down on your backside right there. The breathtaking size of so many bucks is a direct result of Texas being the home of whitetail management. We put in uh, five big food plots. Habitat enhancement is what I've categorized that as. In the past years, I've seen the, uh, the quality of the deer with the management program we have going. Uh, the results have blown my mind. It's the art of deer management in the state has been perfected to a degree unheard of anywhere else in the country. I think if a hunter is looking for pure trophy quality, he would be hard pressed to find a better place to hunt than in Texas. All the management programs really were developed in Texas that people are using elsewhere now. So many of the ranches and, and the places that I hunt on, they won't even try to harvest a deer until he's at least five years of age. Deer take a priority one when it comes to agriculture in a lot of that country. I've hunted them in Canada, I've hunted them in Mexico, I've hunted them in New Zealand a little bit. And I can't think of a finer place to hunt because of the quality of the deer that are there, 